Okay, so trading plan versus trading process versus trading routine versus trading routine. I think a lot of people lump these together. And I think one of the main questions a lot of people, especially beginning traders, ask is, hey, what's a trading plan look like? Right. Um, for me, a trading plan is different than a trading process, and that's different than a trading routine. So we're going to start with, I think the way we're going to go about it is we'll start with a trading routine, right? So trading routine, right? A trading routine is the day-to-day -day program that leads to your process. And that's the trading process, okay? So what that means is, for instance, part of my trading routine is waking up every day at the same time, okay? Why do I do that? Because it's part of my routine. Every day I'm up at least 30 minutes before the first news event of the day in front of the charts. If I wanna do something prior to that, such as the next item, which is doing things that empower you, okay? That can be meditation, it can be yoga, it can be a workout, etc. Okay, whatever it is. Okay, let me make that the lowercase. And then the next thing is reviewing your action plan or the day slash morning from the previous oops, morning from the previous evening. Okay. So that's a that's a trading routine. Okay. So Probably one of the most important things that you need to be doing is having that routine. And so, you know, as again, as I'm recording this, this is coming into the end of the year. We need to really focus on, you know, the next year and how we're going to handle it. And one of those things is your trading routine. Are you getting up at, you know, the same time every day? Or are you a person that gets up, you know, random hours and then just hops in front of the charts 10 minutes before the market opens, right? That's not going to work. It needs to be this process of, or this routine of, okay, I do this, this, and this to lead me to process, okay? And the trading process is what comes from the, after the routine, right? And that is how you go about trading, right? That involves, you know, for instance, all the things that you do in the process of actually looking for a trade, right? So my process would be, you know, there's the routine prior to trading and then there's the process of trading. So in the process of trading, and this is my process every morning, and, and you could maybe lump this into the routine, but I, it, for me, it's different, okay? So always know my news events for the day, right? That's part of it. Uh, actually, let's do this this way. I'm going to be able to add it. So, okay. And then we'll start a new one. So always know my news events for the day. Okay. So for instance, today's Wednesday. There was no report this morning. You should definitely know about it, right? Uh, next would be, you know, I come in, I know the news for the day. I look for any statistical, uh, 
trade advantages. Right? <clears throat> so we have different statistical advantages we know about. Those are things that we look for immediate. So I come in, I know what news is happening. I know I look at my charts for whatever market I'm looking at or markets. I say, hey, is there anything statistically that I need to be looking at here in order to potentially come up with a trading plan, right? So I know the, the things that I'm doing to lead to a possible trade. Next thing I look for is look for levels or areas of interest, right? And that could be on your tick charts, your 60 minute charts, your daily charts, whatever charts you're using. It doesn't matter, but you should know the areas that I'm interested. I, sh I need to know the areas that I'm interested in trading before they get there, not as they get there, right? Because otherwise I'm reacting to the market. I'm not looking, letting the market come to me, right? So that's the next one. Then uh, if I am unable, I guess we'll say, to find anything of interest, I work the charts. For current and possible future ideas. So if I come in and I don't see any statistical advantages that like where I would want to be trading, I don't see any levels that the market is near that I'm interested in. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to work the charts and look for, okay, there's nothing happening immediately right now, but I guarantee you something is going to happen later. So where are those areas and where are those places that the market could could go to based on what's happening now, based on the fact that it's not at a level that I want it to be at, or it's not statistically giving me any advantages right now. So how can that change and what can, what can that look like? And so I'm prepared for when it does change and I know ahead of time where I want to be, right? And then if we do find anything that we're interested in, we write up any trade ideas you are willing to execute on. Okay. And this is your trading plan. Okay. So when we find those levels, we find those advantages, we find those, those areas of interest, we say, hey, this is what I looked, I'm looked. i looking to do here and we'll get to the trading plan. There's one other thing that I want to just touch on real quick here, which is the last thing you do is you swear allegiance to your trading plan <laughs> once you write it up. Okay. That's part of my process, right? Um, let me go to trading plan and I'll come back to this. Uh, one other thing, just in terms of work, the charts. So for instance, I'll just use an example of say, we're looking for levels of interest on a 20 minute chart or a 60 minute chart. You know, I'm going to have those marked out ahead of time. And if we're in between one of those levels, then I'm going to, you know, understand that, Hey, this market's not going to be of interest to me until it gets to X point or Y point or Z point. And that's what I write on the chart. So always journaling on the chart, always, always journaling on the chart. Hey, need more looking for this area or this area. And I will literally mark that up and I'll just put it on the chart and I'll just set it to the side and keep doing whatever I'm doing. And when it gets there, I'll look at it. Otherwise what happens if you don't do that and you're, you're, you don't have an area of interest, you don't have any statistical advantages you're looking to trade and you don't work the charts and find those areas where you do want to be trading that maybe are further away than normal, then what happens is you slowly watch the market. You sit there, watch the little ball bounce up and down. And eventually you decide, Hey, I think I might have, I might see something here, right? Cause you're eager to do something and you end up taking marginal trades, which is the death of us in trading. It's the marginal trades that we have to eliminate. And the only way to do that is to, to have that, this process. That's why we have the process is to keep us out of stuff that we shouldn't be in, okay? And then last is, is the trading plan. 
and stick to the plan is is the the motto. Um, training plan involves a short write up of the trade plan for a particular trade idea. Uh, including the reasoning behind why, right? So why is that the idea? Why, what areas or what levels are happening? What statistical advantage do I have? What's the idea? Why is this a good idea to trade here? Okay. Uh, this would involve expectation of how the trade should work out along with why again always that why 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 is it supposed to do that why should it be doing that what is the reason right then we want to look at possible entries entry types right how what kind of entry am i looking for here right we have our different ways that we get into markets usually there's multiple different opportunities to get in which one are we specifically looking for right next is going to be stop sizes and management plan right so what is that that's hey i'm getting into this trade when it gets to this area, I'll very I'll very likely look to take some off at this area and move my stop down to lock in lock in a little bit less of risk. So I'm risking less to make more, or however you want to do it, right? So when I trade, I have different levels that I'm looking at as far as looking for the trade, and then I'm also have levels of hey, this is where I will move my first I'll move my stop down depending on how it how this how this develops, right? Um, when I take off my first unit of targets. I'll move my stop up or down, you know, th those kind of things. And then lastly, well, not lastly, but next would be targets, right? And contract sizing. Am I trading two contracts? Am I trading four contracts? Am I trading eight contracts? How many contracts am I trading? And based on the stop size, how many can my account handle, right? Sometimes if we're in oil, we're, we're taking less contracts because of the size of the noise in oil and our stops. And then in other markets, we're taking more contracts because the size of our stops are smaller. So it's, that's all based on account size, which is another conversation for another day. But again, targets, where we expect the market to head to, contract sizing and management. And then the last thing that I like to add is just any special notes. And when I say that, what I mean is Anything of special interest that is, for instance, usually maybe not part of my plan or something that I have a concern about, right? Uh, this is a great, you know, for instance, a plan would be, hey, this is a great trade because of X, Y, Z reason. I do my expectations. I do my trade entry types that I'm looking for, the management plan, stop size targets. And then at the end, I'll say, one possible red flag is X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z or whatever, ABC. Okay. Um, and that's because if it does have that little bit of a red flag, I want to note that in the trade. So when I go back and look at my charts later, because I'm going to screenshot everything, I'm going to be able to see that, Hey, this was a bit of a red flag. The trade didn't work out. I need to keep an eye out for that next time. And I need to keep track of that so that I have a data set on that specific red flag that I maybe be concerned about. Right. Maybe the entry is a sharp V right back in your face. And you're like, ah, I don't know if I like this, right? On these specific situations. So again, it's situational, but it's anything extra that I could put on there that will kind of pop up when I'm doing my trade reviews. Uh, so that for me is the, the trading plan versus the process versus the routine. And again, this brings me back to the last thing, which is of your part of your routine. And the, there is a couple other things, but swear allegiance to your trading plan once you write it up. So this is the plan, right? I write that on the chart before the trade sets up. I don't wait for the trade to set up and then go back and write the trading plan after of what I was thinking because then you can fabulate 
you get blown around by the market. You're just kind of reacting. You're not letting the market come to you with a plan. When I come in, I, you know, I, I wake up, I do my routine. I'm ready to go. I'm in front of the charts. <clears throat> I start my process, right? Looking for where I want to be trading, where I want to be engaged with the market. Then I write that on the chart so that, hey, it's right in my face. I'm not going to forget about it. And again, the whole reason for this whole, I mean, three-step process, I guess you'd call it, is to avoid marginal trades. So that's the uh, trading plan versus trading process versus trading routine. So thanks.